liquor down or whatever it is that you've indulged. Power! Wonder working power. Jesus says, I got power and I want to give it to you. But don't go nowhere. Don't even try to be a witness until you are baptized with power from an on above. That's why uh, uh, Paul says in Ephesians uh, uh, 3, be strong in the Lord. He says in Ephesians 5, verse 8, he says, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That means to be completely submerged under. Everything has got to get wet. You got to take that cap off and let your hair get wet. He's got to get into your brain. You can't be a little bit pregnant in the Lord. There's no such thing as I'm a little bit pregnant. You either is or you're not. You shall receive power. Not when you get money, not when you retire, not when you hit the lottery. You shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. The Holy Ghost will fix your problem. The, the Holy Ghost will fix your sex problems. The Holy Ghost will fix your attitude problem. Can't get along with nobody, can't work with nobody. The Holy Ghost is there. He said, you don't even try to be a witness. Don't even think about being a witness until you receive. That's why I said don't go nowhere. Stay right here in Jerusalem until you are prepared. And after that, the Holy Ghost will come upon you. And, and let me get back to, to, to Luke. I, I want to leave with this promise. He said, uh, so you ask. You have nothing. Realize you have nothing. But keep on asking. You know, the man said, I... It's late. I don't want to get up out of my bed. But he kept asking because he knew where the bread was. Brothers and sisters, we know where the bread is. We know where the source of power is. And, and, and the, the present indicative tense suggests that it's not a one-time asking. It's keep on asking for bread. Keep on asking for the Holy Spirit. We get in this problem. We only, we only ask for the Holy Spirit when the preacher tells us to. This is a daily we are being renewed daily by the Holy Spirit. That's my, that's my problem. I thought it was only for special occasions. The Holy Spirit is every day or whenever you need him. And, and then he, he goes on to say, uh, will a son, this is, this is the willingness to God to give you this, this special gift. He said, will a son ask bread? If, if a son shall ask for bread, if a, your, your child asks you, for just the daily necessities, not, not, not getting some toy or, 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 or some video game, but if they just ask for, for, for soy milk. I was going to say milk, but I want to keep the health trend going. But if they shall ask for just the daily necessities, would you deny them? You're already evil, but yet you will feed your children. And then it says, uh, uh, if ye then be an evil know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more shall... So this whole thing, this is what it's all about. We're watching Jesus. Jesus teaches us to pray. I'm telling you how to pray. First of all, you've got to be persistent. You've got to be obedient. And you've got to be in a relationship with me. And then he says, how much more will your heavenly Father, when you pray, give you the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Brothers and sisters, we have to have confidence in his pledged word. He said, I will give it. He said, I will give if you ask me and if you keep asking me and if you believe, you can have confidence that God will give it to you. He'll give you the Holy Spirit. This is what it means to have life more abundantly. This is what everybody is looking for. This is what they're looking for love in all the wrong places. The love is, is in the Holy Spirit. The love is where Jesus is. He says, I'll give it, I'm more willing to give it, give it to you than you are willing to give good gifts to your children. Well, you say, Pastor, I don't deserve to ask. I feel guilty asking him. Um, you know, I, 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 you know I, I, uh, I just made a mistake yesterday, last night, last week. I made a bad choice. So uh, you're saying that I can still ask for the Holy Spirit? Brothers and sisters, the reason why 
God is giving the Holy Spirit is so that you can make the right choices. So all the more reason why he would give it to you. Because you need to make right decisions. In the church, as a parent, you need to make right decisions, informed decisions by the Holy You got a personal computer that says, right, he said, I'll be in you. A personal, um, I, would, I would say cell phone, but, but no, that, that won't work. A personal connection with the being that has all wisdom and knowledge. And he wants to save you and I. So don't be afraid to ask for the Holy Spirit. He wants to give us more abundant life. But we have to trust him. And this is what personal revival is. You can't leave out the Holy Spirit with personal revival. And what we're learning today is that this thing is constant. It's not a one-time thing. And then you begin to see your life change. And, and folk will see that something is going on with you. Some of y'all looking at me and says, something, something's happening to you. I don't know what it is, but I know my, my finger is in the socket and I'm going to keep it there because I'm getting some, I feel some power. I know we're not supposed to go by feelings, but I feel some power. I don't feel that there's too much that God can't do because I, I had some testimonies. I've been in the audience chamber and I've seen what God can do. You can't force God to do something, but you don't have to, you, you, don't, you, you just got to believe that he can give you victory. Victory is a sign that you've got the Holy Spirit. Victory. How many want victory this morning? Stand to your feet if you want victory. Victory over something. Just remember the words of Paul, ye are more than conquerors through him that loved us and gave his life for us. You're standing today because you're inviting God you want to be more sensitive to the offer. See, what we're not sensitive to, we, we don't ask for. That's why he said you ask and miss. But we're not asking for money. We're not asking for fame. We're asking for the Holy Spirit, which brings every gift with it. So let's pray based on your response. Father in heaven, Lord. This is not the end of a sermon. This is the beginning of a revival. And we pray, oh God, that, that uh, each of us, Lord, will collectively allow Christ to have so much room that he will begin to revolutionize our lives that we may experience the peace that we've been looking for, the joy. The entire world is seeking for the abundance of the things that a man or woman can possess. But yet, Lord, you've invested the church with your own fullness. And we, at times, go lacking because we don't believe. Help us to remember from this day on, Lord, that we need that precious gift. We need Jesus in us. Not just talking about Jesus, but having Jesus in us so that he can work in us. We renounce working in our own strength. We recognize we can do nothing. Sometimes we do things and you, you bless us instead, but you want to do far more. So take control of our lives. Take the helm of our ship. And make us, Lord, go in your direction. To go east, west, south, or north. But also in our conducting ourselves in the house of God, we want to be like you. We want to understand that meekness and humility is the greatest 
attribute of, of a Christian. So help us in our leadership to also be meek. Give us wisdom. Wisdom to know the right decisions to make. Wisdom in our families. And then, oh God, as we study your word, pray that you give us insight that will draw us into the drama of the ages, that we will see ourselves as part of this entire story of the greatest story ever told. Jesus coming from heaven, crowning himself with humanity so that he might reach humanity. And then while you were on earth, you told everyone to come to you. And now, in these last days, we have many others that are saying, come to them. We have false theories and false worldviews that take us away from, from your throne and from, from bowing before your feet. We want to be proud. We want to be somebody. But Lord, we renounce. We, we, we're, we're declaring today that we're nothing unless you put your spirit in us. So Lord, give us a taste of what we have been looking for. And may we be able to say, like the psalmist, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Give us a taste of this blessing of the Holy Spirit. Right now, Lord, touch hearts, touch minds, and even those whose minds are elsewhere. Lord, we pray that your Holy Spirit will even prick them. Our mind may be on food, but, oh, Lord, pray that your Spirit will be our food. Take our hearts, O Lord, soften them, and keep us, Lord. Disciple us, and then let us be witnesses. And Lord, you, you, you didn't say there's the whole law, uh, uh, you have to spend a lot of time to be a witness. You can give the Holy Ghost immediately. You can baptize us immediately. And right now, Lord, we can declare Victory. We can declare uh, things not seen as though they are. When we leave this place, when we go home, we can have victory believing that you are already working things out in our behalf. We can believe, Lord, that we can change our secret faults. We can overcome. We believe it, oh God. And we, we ask that the Holy Spirit just resonate in our hearts and also go before us to accomplish the things that we cannot accomplish be with the strained relationships there's no relationship that's so strained that it cannot be made right oh lord bless the leaders the elders all of the department heads in this church and we pray that you bring other sheep oh lord we need more laborers. And when the laborers come, oh Lord, help us, Lord, to see ourselves as an, as an extension of you, to be patient, to be meek, and to keep the revival going and not distance ourselves from the truth as it is in Jesus. We ask this blessing in the name of Jesus. Let everyone say, Amen. Please be seated.